And welcome to an episode of Locked On Lightning crossover with Locked On New York Rangers. I'm Adam Danker. Alongside me on the crossover episode is John Chick of Locked On New York Rangers. John, what's up, buddy? It's been a long off season. The last time we spoke was uh, really Eastern Conference Finals. I think I, I don't know if we recorded after the conclusion of that. I know we we had a couple episodes here and there after. Probably I think it was like after like three and then. I think six we did a did an episode but i don't think we ever did a conclusion but uh yeah how's how's your summer been how's the off season been bunny uh and uh, uh yeah it's been great man you know obviously the the rangers didn't get the result but it was a lot of fun doing a couple crossover episodes with you and i know as recently as the season before i had joked that like oh man you know we'll, we'll do this when they're playing each other in the conference final and then it actually happened so that was <laughs> that was really cool and I, I know we both had fun with that and i mean hey congratulations to your team on once again, making it to the finals there. Um, yeah, but been a lot of fun. Good summer. Um, you know, just keeping tabs on the Rangers and everything that's going on. And uh, obviously, Vincent Trocheck, the big free agent signing that, you know, they made this offseason. Uh, salary cap space is a little bit of a concern. So uh, there was only so much they could do. Um, but, you know, I've always been a fan of Trocheck, just one of those guys with a good all around game. And uh, yeah, I think he'll make a nice addition to the Rangers this year. Right. Yeah. And and I think that's a good place to start. So uh, for all of you, you know, listening on our audio platforms, thank you for doing that. And also watching on YouTube, you know, make sure to subscribe. So on this episode of Locked on Lightning slash Locked on New York Rangers, we'll be discussing, you know, what's changed for the Rangers, what's changed for the Lightning in the offseason, and as well as a preview of the game. So let's start with the Rangers. Yeah. Vincent Trotrek, which, you know, when I saw that move um, made, I was like, wow, like, that's such like it, it. It seems like with the Rangers the last couple of years, you know they, they they have not really made bad moves. You know we I've seen you know since you know Drury has taken over the reins. You know I, there was a lot of talk when that first happened was that oh he's gonna go big, he's gonna make these big contracts, or or you know he's gonna really try and make a splash. You know as soon as he takes the reins, and and really you saw him make moves that really I wouldn't have expected someone who has really you know gotten the reins of, of being a GM for the first time, you know, he's making moves that make sense. And it's, it's the move and they're easy moves. It's not out of the box ideas. And you don't see that a lot in the NHL. And, and really what has that been like <laughs> for someone who, whose team is, you know, let's, let's face it, you know, no disrespect to the Rangers, but they outperformed their expectations last season. And now this is the season where you're going to really see those expect expectations arise. What has it been like you been been for you, excuse me, for this whole process of seeing this team come together over the last couple of years? I mean, it's been a tremendous amount of fun. You know, one of the things that I have to mention, because obviously, you know, before this last year, they were down for a little while. Um, I guess they were kind of in the playoff mix two years ago, but they never really got that close. They, they kind of hung around for a little while and uh, were eliminated with a few games to go uh, the year before that. They didn't even do that. And, um, you know, it's just been a lot of fun seeing the plan come together, so to speak, because you know, Adam, we're, we're big sports guys. We, we, you know, we're into a lot of different sports. If, as long as your team has some kind of a plan in place, I think you can kind of buy into it and have fun with it. And even though the Rangers weren't that good before this past year, I still enjoyed watching them because they were so young and it felt like there was a plan in place. You know, we have to get younger. We have to blow this whole thing up, rebuild the whole thing from scratch. Uh, they got a little bit of luck when it came to the draft lottery for two straight years there. So that was nice. Um, but it's when you have a team that just doesn't seem to have any plan. They just kind of throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. But you know, to see it all come to fruition, uh, you know, quote unquote, ahead of schedule this past season, uh, that was a ton of fun, man. And it's crazy because, and this is something we talked about too, but, you know, the Rangers and Lightning, they both very easily could have been eliminated in the first round this past year. And then we end up feeling completely different about, you know, our team's respective seasons. And the Rangers were down 3 1 in the series against Pittsburgh. They were down 2 0 in game five. Uh, the Lightning were in overtime in game six against uh, Toronto and having to win that to stay alive. So, yeah, man, it's just a roller coaster, but it, it's been great. And uh, to your point about Chris Drury, um, you know, a hiccup or two here and there, you know, the signing of Patrick Nemeth last offseason did not work out at all. Um, I think some people are still mad at him over the uh, Pavel Buchnevich trade, although I've, you know, argued that that was due to salary cap concerns. You know, it, it'd be very difficult to squeeze in Buchnevich right now, uh, the way they're lined up. So uh, for the most part, yeah, I think Drury's done a great job. I'd give him like somewhere in the B plus, A minus range. Fantastic trade deadline this past season as well. You know, a lot of those guys were just rentals, but uh, they stepped in and played a, a very important role for this team. Yeah, uh, you know, as much as it was, it, you hated to see him kill the, the lightning. I think one of the players that I very much enjoyed on the Rangers, uh, 
you know, in that playoff series was Alex Kopp. I, I, I think, yeah, that was a no brainer trade to be made at that time. And, and yeah, that goes back to the point uh, before, you know, he's making the moves that make sense that are easy, that for some reason you don't see the other, some of the other GMs in the league make uh, for whatever reason. Uh, but, you know, Looking at this roster right now, these and I'm looking if, if if people want to follow along, I'm looking on daily faceoff, so it might be a little different, you know, on your end in terms of what you think the lines may be. But uh, I'm looking at that third line, and I was talking about this a little bit on the last episode of Locked On Lightning, previewing just a little bit. But you and I, we both spoke about this last year as well. Championships are 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 made in our one by third lines. Now looking at this Rangers third line with Lafreniere, Heedle, and Goodrow, uh, where do you rank this third line among the other ones in the NHL right now? Um, it's a little bit hard to say because they've been shuffling the deck quite a bit in this preseason. And on one hand, that's a good thing. You know, you've got six preseason games. You might as well experiment, play around, see what works, see who clicks with who, all that good stuff. Um, by that same token, though, I kind of wish they were a little bit more settled because uh, right up through the last game there, they were still kind of moving guys around. And um, it looked like for a while there that they were going to stick with the kid line as the third line. You would go Lafreniere, uh, Heedle, and Kako together. And I've kind of been hoping they would bump Kako and Lafreniere into the, the top six and, you know, give them a chance to essentially just sink or swim there. Um, and on that top line right wing spot that you're looking at there, Adam, because I'm looking at uh, daily faceoff as well. Uh, they were really rotating a lot of guys in and out. I mean, VZ was there. Uh, Goodrow was there. Sammy Blay was there. I think there's even one other that I might be forgetting about right now. Um, but they end up finally bumping Kako up there, and he's got three goals in his last two preseason games. So it looks like he'll start there. And then uh, for the third line, you've basically got uh, the remaining two players from the kid line, uh, Lafreniere and Heedle. And now Barclay Goodrow is going to play with them. I think that could work. You know, Barclay Goodrow can do uh, a little bit of the grunt work, uh, you know, dig some pucks out of corners, all that good stuff, set these kids up, uh, these very talented kids to, you know, hopefully score some goals this season. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a really solid line, but I would imagine that the Rangers uh, are not done mixing and matching as far as the line combinations are concerned. Um, we'll see. You know, Jimmy Vesey for a while was looking like he was going to be on the top six. And then uh, they just recently put Vitaly Krafts off back onto the second line. So uh, a lot of moving parts right now. Not always the easiest thing to keep track of. But uh, yeah, man, I, I, I do like that third line the way it's set up right now. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see how long they stick with it. Yeah, you me you mentioned that, you know, the, there was a lot of moving around with the players on this team. And, and, and coming from someone who has watched the Lightning basically win two cups off of doing that, I take that as kind of a, a good thing for the person who is rooting for that team. Because, you know, that means that that you have players that can do a lot of things that are that are that are almost outplaying the lines that they are on. So, you know, that 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 comes very much in, in hand and, and comes in handy when when injuries start to come into the equation. But uh, and it also comes with players maybe outplaying their expectations and, and really their potential right there. So really, that brings me to my next question. What players on this team do you think are are ready to take that next step. You know, obviously the big two names that come to mind for me, at least, and obviously Ranger fans who are some, uh, and, and, and Ranger fans who obviously have been watching these team, these, these kids play, or maybe even lightning fans who got, were able to see a little bit more of a closer glimpse at these players, you know, Capo Capo and, and, and Lafreniere, but who are the other players on this team that you're really looking to take that next big step this year? Yeah, I mean, you're always going to look at Kako and Lafreniere to, to take that next step, but uh, I think that's kind of obvious. So if I'm going to throw out another name, uh, the first guy that immediately pops into mind for me is uh, Keandre Miller. And I don't know if you saw that clip, Adam, but, you know, between the Rangers and Lightning last year, they go through the handshake line, and John Cooper was talking to Miller for a little while there, and he's like, you're a hell of a player, man. Just keep going, keep yeah. going, keep doing your thing. And he's absolutely right. I mean, Keandre Miller... Uh, just two years ago was a surprise addition to the opening night roster. He he made the team. I think he was just like 19 or 20 years old. Uh, had a couple of hiccups every every now and then. He had a rough opening night that year. But for the most part, man, Keandre Miller's taken to the NHL like a duck to water. And he's been great. Um, has really helped solidify uh, the blue line for the New York Rangers. Uh, a very dynamic player. He has some offense to his game. I think we'll see more of that this season as he continues to become more comfortable and uh, continues to, uh, you know, be be comfortable with, you know, driving to the net every now and then. Uh, we saw that uh, every now and then this past season. Uh, he's got great chemistry with Jacob Truba, uh, can play on the power play, although I don't think he'll be there to start the season, can play on the penalty kill. Uh, just a fantastic all-around player and somebody that I, I think the sky is really the limit for him. Um, and if I want to do like a little bit of an honorable mention here, 
I'll uh, I'll throw Braden Schneider in there as well. He's somebody that came up uh, for the Rangers uh, to kind of solidify the third pairing this past season. Uh, was just 20 years old when he made his debut, but you're just kind of an old school, big, tough physical player, kind of in the mold of Jacob Truba a little bit. Uh, he'll drop the gloves if he needs to. Uh, and then same thing, you know, there's some growing pains with him as a rookie, but I look to him to really uh, solidify the Ranger blue line as far as, you know, the depth is concerned. He'll be out there with Zach Jones, another very young defenseman. But uh, yeah, Braden Schneider, man, I, when he was drafted by the Rangers, I can remember them saying that he was one of the safest players in the draft. Like maybe he doesn't have the ceiling of some guys, but it's like this dude is going to be a top four caliber defenseman in, in, in this league for sure. And I, I'm seeing every reason to believe that. I don't see there, there being any way that he doesn't go on to have a very nice NHL career for himself. Yeah, a lot of lot of young guys. You're in, you're in a good position up there in New York where, you know, a lot of good guys uh, who are very much still young and still, I think, haven't hit their the prime of their career. So, yeah. uh, you know, you guys are in a pretty good position and it definitely is going to make uh, things for the Lightning a little bit more daunting to get through that Eastern Conference gauntlet uh, in the in the years coming. Uh, through the playoffs. And and in just a little bit, we'll talk about my lightning as well. But first, let's talk about our sponsors. So thank you for joining us back, uh, you know, making us your first listen of the day. Remember to subscribe to the Locked On Rangers and Locked On Lightning YouTube channels, as well as all the social media. Uh, you can find the information on, you know, we'll, we'll punch that. We'll punch in that information at the end. We'll plug in all that stuff. But yeah, you know, the the, the Rangers, they're a team now where I feel like they they made a statement regardless of you know whether it was win lose or uh last year in the Eastern Conference Finals against my Lightning you know I think even the even though they were up to nothing and you know we all know what happened the series didn't go the well the way you Ranger fans want it I think you still made a statement and, and you know you guys may say that and and you know I'm trying to be unbiased here but you know the Lightning fan might say well you know what you guys just it wasn't your time, you know, you, you choked or whatever, but you know, I, I think this, you've, you've provided a good groundwork uh, for yourselves going forward. And, and, you know, the lightning did that as well. You know, it, it, I, I was kind of talking about this at the conclusion of the conference finals last year that, you know, you're kind of starting to see a little bit of a similar path, you know, not only with, you know, a lot of people were making the comparisons with, with, with the Panthers did, you know, they were having a great season, won the president's trophy, blew it in the playoffs against the lightning. Lightning did that in 2019 to Columbus after winning the President's Trophy. And then this season, you know, you have the Rangers, a team who's still trying to figure it out a little bit, but has the pieces uh, kind of, you know, choking in the playoffs to the Lightning. Uh, so maybe we'll see a little bit of a, a similar trajectory as well with New York. But looking at my Lightning, it, it's it's weird, John. You know, we're we're not the top dogs this year. And the first first time I've been doing this show in the in the four seasons that we've been doing it, uh, you know, we're not going into a season where it's like you, we don't have our chest puffed out <laughs> anymore. You know, it's kind of we're here licking our wounds. We're kind of just, all right, let's build it back up kind of mentality. And and it's weird, you know, hearing that from a team that has so much experience. And, and you know, you normally hear that from teams that have have, you know, that are in your position uh, with the Rangers. So a lot of some moves being made. Not a lot. Uh, but you know what? It's there's still a lot of optimism around this this lightning team. Um, yeah. and yeah, what, what better test than to go against the, the guys that, uh, we faced in the Eastern conference finals last year. But so, yeah, looking at my lightning there's for me, at least, I don't know about you. I don't know if you've gotten a chance to really look at the roster, but I'm very cautiously optimistic about how this season is going to go. The lightning are starting the season without two of, you know, one of the two guys who are, who are mean a big part to this team. And that is Zach Bogosian and Anthony Sorelli. Uh, not sure how much is that that's going to affect this team in the coming weeks. I know there's going to be probably certain uh, situations in which this team is going to miss those guys, but you know they the timetable is November. But as you you and I both know, John, a lot could happen in oh, yeah. a couple of weeks. So yeah, um, what have you seen from this Lightning team that that has really you know over from from going from last year to this year? What is something that sticks out to you at least uh, with the Lightning roster? Well, for starters, I mean, I, I still do consider them one of the favorites because, I mean, yeah, they've had a couple of uh, losses, whether it's, you know, the guys that you just mentioned that are going to be out due to injury or a couple of free agent losses. I mean, that core is still intact. Of course, you got Vasilevsky. Uh, I, I still think there will be a serious threat once, you know, the playoffs roll around. But uh, the one guy that I definitely wanted to ask you about that, you know, they had to let, let walk in free agency was Andre Palat. Uh, he, of course, goes to the New Jersey Devils. And, um, you know, somebody who not one of the, 
top superstars on that team, but that guy's been a really solid player for you guys for a long time. Seems to take his game to another level when the playoffs roll around every year. And, uh, you know, again, two-time Stanley Cup champion with Tampa there. So, I mean, how do you feel about losing him? And um, is there enough there to, to kind of replace him? You know, I'm not going to say – I'm going to answer your second question first. You know, I'm right. not entirely sure. I, I, I think that it's really going to be a matter of how this team plays. You know, the one thing with Lightning is – with the Lightning over the last couple of years is that they've been kind of this chameleon-type team where they're able to blend in – uh, and, and play the style of the current situation they're in. You know, certain times out throughout the season, if they're missing Coach and Stamkos, you know, they're, they'll they become a little bit more of a, a grit, a grittier, more team. Uh, you know, if, if you have all your stars in the lineup, they'll, you know, you'll see that high flying, uh, what I like to call it. And I know my Locked On NHL host, uh, co-host Chris Masilli hates when I say this, but, you know, more of that greatest show on ice um, yeah. mentality, scoring a lot of goals. Uh, so, you know, it, you're going to be it's going to be curious to see how, you know, what kind of identity this Tampa team chooses, uh, especially without Palat, because, yeah, like you said, great in the playoffs. You know, he had a little bit of a setback year. I wouldn't say a setback year, but there were certain times. Let's face it. Let's be honest here. There were certain times throughout the course of the season last year where he you didn't even know he was on the ice, um, but he came up big in the playoffs. And, and yeah, unfortunately, it was unfortunate to see him walk. Uh, in, in free agency, but you know what? He played. He had, he had a hell of a playoff run. He deserved every penny, every cent of of the money that he got from New Jersey. And he's really one of those players that you know he's not going to be the the lifeblood of your team on the ice, of course, especially with all the star power Tampa has. But he's going to be one of those guys that's I I I kind of look at it. He's going to he's going to make the play before the big play to set up the big play. And I think that's what the Lightning are really going to miss most from Andre Palat. Uh, this season. And I think that's what really, you know, the devils were kind of looking at, you know, they don't expect him to kind of be that, that star player to come in and be the leader right away on the ice. They obviously he'll probably be the leader in, in the locker room alongside Jack Hughes and, and a couple of other players on that team. I think it's more so there he's getting paid to be, you know, a teacher to, to help guys progress uh, in their career. So yeah, um, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a learning process with this Tampa team to see what, how are they going to be able to adjust without life, without uh, Andre Pilat? Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, it's a situation where it almost feels like he might be a little bit more, for all the reasons you just said, he might be a little bit more valuable to a team like the Devils, being yeah. that veteran leader, than he is to a team like the Lightning, because the Lightning have just been such a machine over the last few years. And, you know, they'll keep marching on just the way that they were. Um, I did want to ask you, this is a case of, you know, something really coming full circle here. Kind of an under-the-radar signing for Tampa, but... Vladislav Nemesikov, back with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, of course, you know, he was part of that ill-fated trade that the Rangers made with the Lightning, pretty much giving you guys JT Miller and Ryan McDonough for just about nothing. I mean, let's be real here. And uh, Nemesikov, you know, he gets traded, you know, I, he, he played the one season with the Rangers, and I think it was like two games into the next year they traded him. Yeah. But uh, he now goes back to Tampa Bay after bouncing around a little bit. Uh, your thoughts on adding him? Looks like he might be on the third line to start the season. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Vladdy, it, it was one of those things that was funny when y you kind of see with this Lightning, no matter who, whether it was when it was Steve Yeiserman or now Julian Reese Boss, this Lightning team, they they love, you know, if, if they look at the free agent market and they don't really see anything they like, they'll go after a guy they know, and that's mm -hmm. Vladdy Nemestikov. Uh, and, and so when the news broke that the Tampa Bay Lightning signed him, I kind of just laughed because it was just one of those things like, oh, of course, you know, Vladimir Nemestikov, one of the na one of the last names you you kind of would have expected. But it's like, no, that's too obvious of a move to make, considering he was with this team before. And thus far, he he's played well, you know, but of course, those are those are preseason games. So how much stock that you want to put into to preseason is depending on, you know, who you are, for me at least, I don't really look at it. I just look at those as throwaway games. That's kind of just a scrimmage to me. You know, guys just going out there, you know, stick and puck, really nothing going on. Um, I, I, I'll I, care more about what he does tonight um, against the Rangers and see how he out, how he's able to gel with his teammates. Yeah, and and, and I think, you know what, it, I think it's a it's – a, it's a it's kind of a situation where you look at it and, you know, if he, if he does well on that third line, um, I think it's mostly going to be because of what Ross Colton brings to the table. Um, I think, you know, if, if Vladdy goes out there and has 50 points this season, I think that's perfectly fine in my book. If he goes out there and, and has somewhat of a mediocre season, 
you know, I'm going to also say, well, you know what, that's what they kind of paid for. It's just kind of an extra body kind of situation out there. But I think Nemestikov's going to go out there. I think he's going to produce. And and I think it's, uh, once again, Julie Brees' boss is going to look like a genius in this situation. Sounds good, man. And uh, got a similar question for you that, you know, you just asked me a couple minutes ago here. But, um, you know, any, any players on the Lightning that are kind of under the radar right now or that you're looking for to kind of take a take a jump this year? Or is there any prospect that you're excited about? Could be like a midseason call up. Just anybody that, you know, Ranger fans might not be that familiar with. I have really been and. and- you might remember this from when we kind of spoke a little bit. He didn't get that much playing time in the playoffs, but Cal Foot uh, playing on the first line this year, son of uh, NHL uh, player, uh, former NHL player Adam Foot. Uh, Cal Hett is one of those those defensemen where I kind of compare him to a way of the, the early days of Keandre Miller. Just really big body, but I don't think they know how big they are on the ice, you know, just kind of a bull in a China shop kind of situation, very raw potential, but you do see what they could bring to the table. Once you kind of polish off all that raw stuff. And, 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 and that's what Cal foot is, you know, he, he's, he's going out there, he's still kind of learning the position and he's going to be playing on that first line right now as it's projected alongside Victor Hedman. So, you know, who, who, what a name, a better player to learn from other than Victor Hedman right now, when you're coming up in the first couple of seasons of your NHL career, uh, I think Cal Foot is going to eventually evolve into one of those defensemen who could play both ways. Uh, I, he's got a booming slap shot when he does take it. He's not very trigger uh, happy uh, over the last couple of years. So hopefully, you know, you kind of see him open up his game more to that. Uh, yeah. So Cal Foot, 100 percent for me. I think, it, you know, if he could reach where I think he's capable of uh, in his potential, I think that first line for Tampa is going to be really deadly going forward. You know, hearing you say that, it kind of uh, it kind of makes me realize, and, and it's something that you know I've been realizing more and more the more that I watch hockey and the more these seasons go by. Here, when you're you know a, a defenseman in this league, it can make all the difference in the world who your defense partner is. And I, yeah. I think a great example of that is you know we, we talked about Miller a minute ago. He pretty much was with uh, Jacob Truba right from the start. Truba's obviously a leader, big, tough, physical guy. He's now the Ranger captain, all that good stuff. And then, you know, Nils Lundqvist, who never really clicked with the Rangers when he played with them last year. Well, he was out there with Patrick Nemeth. So it's two very different situations. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just I don't know if you agree, Adam, but I think that can go a long way toward, uh, you know, how somebody begins their NHL careers, who you're out there, you know, paired up with on, on defense. Yeah, 100 percent. You know, it's a lot of people don't realize how complicated of a position uh, being a defenseman is, you know, really. You're, it's just you and one other guy out there controlling 200 feet of ice, you know, being kind of the patrolman out there. And and especially when you're out there with someone that you don't necessarily click with and you're a rookie or you're still relatively new to the league, that could cause problems for you. <laughs> I mean, we've all seen yep. it. <laughs> I, I saw it numerous times throughout the Stanley Cup playoffs. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, Mikhail Sergachev, to bring an example, he's a little bit more seasoned than obviously a Cal foot. But, you know, being out there, not being on point, uh, at certain times, you know, we, we all know that the worst thing you could see, especially is, is turning the puck over in your zone. And then it's a it's a it's a race down the other side to try and stop the goal. You know, but, you know, that's why we have good goaltenders in our nets for our team. Uh, but, yeah, so, you know, Cal Foot, I think he's one of those players that it's going to be interesting to see you know because john cooper is is not shy about moving things around especially you know when zach bogosian does come back where is he gonna fit into all this and you know obviously everything and i know you wanted to talk about this just a little bit but you know everything that has happened in the last couple of days with with ian cole uh you know how much of a wrench does that throw into the lightning's defensive plans and and really you know as unfortunate as the situation is, it doesn't have catastrophic consequences for Tampa in terms of personnel changes. So, you know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, it's an unfortunate situation, but, um, you know, it is what it is. We move on from it. And, uh, you know, now here's a chance for Hayden Flurry on that third line to, to really make the most of the opportunity that he has. Yeah, I mean, the, I'll just say, you know, regarding Ian Cole, I mean, the accusations, if, if they, you know, if he did those things, I mean, it was nauseating to read that. And yeah. I, I think it pretty much goes without saying that, you know, if he is indeed guilty of any of those things that uh, he should be done in the NHL and, and probably have a lot of other, even more worse things happen to him, you know, in yeah. terms of, you know, the, you know, just 
what he did being reprehensible and illegal if he did it, you know, and again, yeah. it, it's, it's not a comfortable thing to talk about. It, it's tricky. You know, we have to be careful how we word things at him with, with situations like this, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that was obviously a tough read. And it's just one of those things, man, you, you just don't expect to go on Twitter and see just, you know, a random player like Ian Cole being accused of something so, uh, you know, uh, heinous. Frankly. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's an unfortunate situation. I, and, but I think, like you said, from a hockey perspective, you know, going from him to Hayden Fleury probably doesn't make that much of a difference for Tampa. I wouldn't think. I mean, I don't think that's a, a very significant drop off or anything like that. But as far as the Cole situation, I mean, I guess, you know, like you said in yesterday's episode, we'll, we'll kind of just let the whole thing play out and, and, and see what happens here. You know. Yeah, uh, it, it's. Uh, I also said on my episode, you know, it, it's going to be an interesting moment for the for the NHL going forward. You know, everything that has been going on with racial issues in the league, and now uh, we we all are familiar with what happened with the Chicago Blackhawks last season, and and now this season, it's going to be a little bit of a uh, a heat check moment for for the National Hockey League, and and you know what they're going to have to do, maybe whether it be venting players or. Or, or, you know, having some sort of stricter uh, code of conducts at it uh, in with the Players Association. Yeah, it, it's an unfortunate situation. Uh, and we're just going to have to sit by and, and watch and see what what happens, you know. And, and that's probably the worst part about it. But And my hope for this, at least, John, is that it doesn't hang over the Lightning's head all season long. I hope the media understands that a lot of these guys, especially with Cole, it wasn't like Cole was it has been with the Lightning the last five years. He's a free agent signing. This past past summer, so if anything, uh, you know, I would say maybe the Blues or or you know the Pittsburgh Penguins. That's what it kind of seems as though this happened during his time in Pittsburgh. Uh, should be asked the bulk of those questions. So uh, yeah, um, you know, like I said on the show yesterday, right? I'm not going to really talk about it any further. Let's just mm-hmm. talk about hockey. Let's talk about the guys that are in the dressing room that are on the ice, and you know, that's how we're going to handle it going forward. No, I'm with you, man. The last thing that I'll say in the situation is just that, like, I actually feel for the Tampa Bay Lightning because, yeah. you know, they, they did this signing and they, they had no idea, presumably. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, I, I figure, you know, always a little bit of a jarring transition when you talk about something as heavy as, as that stuff. But yeah. uh, we do have a game tonight, Adam. You know, it, we, the first, you know, I mean, I know the, the Predators and the Sharks played two games, but nobody even was aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> Middle of a day on a Friday, you know, what, with, while the MLB playoffs are going on. So, um, yeah, the first primetime game here, and, and, you know, what an honor it is to Rangers and Lightning kicking off the season here. But uh, any predictions for this game tonight as far as, you know, final score, who's going to score for the Lightning, what, anything you can throw out there for me? Well, last time I checked, uh, I was looking at the lines last night, uh, John, and, and, you know, I was, I, I've was i been saying to myself the last couple of weeks, putting putting money on football, you know, I have not won a single bet. And I was like, thank goodness, thank goodness hockey season is, is right around the corner. And and the, the over under on this game is five and a half. So, you know, the bookies are thinking this is going to be a high scoring game. People are going to jump on Bazzi and Sturkin relatively early. Um, I think it's going to be a very close knit game. You know, if I had to guess, I'd probably be, you know, that is the ballpark, but I think I'm going to take the under on that. I think I'm going to say, you know, a 3 2 win for the Lightning, you know, in the garden, a little bit of a heartbreaker uh, to start off the season for you guys. I think that. You were going to see John Cooper roll out that star line between Point, Kucherov, and Stamkos a lot tonight. Just to, you know, not only to get a lot of confidence in those guys, but just remind everybody a little bit, you know, who who, who you're talking about, you know, because there are some people, uh, you know, very quickly, especially after the Lightning lost to the Avalanche. And, you know, the, the Avalanche won that series deservingly so. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say that was a fluke or whatever. But, you know, when it comes down to it, the Lightning – they have something to prove this year. A lot of people are saying that the dynasty is over and Steven Stamkos even said it in uh, on media day. Listen, there is a lot left to be written in this book uh, for the Tampa Bay lightning for this group. So, you know, I'm expecting them to go, go out there tonight, make a statement at one of the greatest arenas in the world against the New York Rangers, a team on the rise uh, against, I think, the best goalie, one of the best goalies in the league. You know, I think he still has a little bit more to prove until we talk about him and Andre Vasilevsky in the same conversation. But yeah, and overall, I think it's going to be a chippy game. I think that you know there are some players on this Rangers team and, and these Tampa and this Tampa team who remember a lot of the big hits that were laid uh, in that series last year. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see some friction early on, especially in warmups, 
between Patrick Maroon and Ryan Reeves. You know, I think everybody's wishing for that anyway. Uh, what about you, John? Are you, are you expecting a little bit more of the same or do you think yeah. this is going to going to be a little bit more? Because I, I, I was talking to some Lightning fans before and they were saying, you know, we might see a little bit of, you know, a little bit of a quiet first, a little bit in that. And then you start to see midway through the second, you know, maybe things start to pick up. I think this is going to be a dog fright fight from the opening puck drop. Yeah, I'm going to go with the same final as you, but I got to pick my Rangers to, uh, you know, hold down the Ford in Madison Square Garden tonight and win this one three to two. But yeah, I'm with you, man. I mean, you know, obviously it's opening night. A lot of these guys are going to have a lot in the tank and there's two world-class goalies going against each other. Um, and, and for all the star power on these teams and for as much as these teams can put the puck in the net, most of the games last year uh, in the conference final were fairly low scoring. I mean, I, yeah. I know game one, the Rangers won like six to two or whatever it was, but um, after that, you know, they were all pretty tight. And um, I, I think it's going to be more of the same in this one tonight. I think it's going to be, you know, a tightly contested game. I can see a situation where like, you know, as far as like fireworks and chippiness and whatever you want to call it, I, I could see maybe the first period being kind of civil, but I get the feeling that, you know, once the fuse is lit, you're going to see it pick up. All it's going to take is that one big hit or, you know, that one player who makes a little bit of contact with the goalie, and then it's, it's going to be off to the races after that, and you're going to get some pushing and shoving after pretty much every play. So, um, yeah, I'm very curious to see how it plays out, man. You know, I, again, I think that, you know, a lot of these players certainly re remember what happened in the conference final last year. You know, that, that got chippy at times as well. We saw Lafreniere and Stamkos dropping yeah. the gloves at the end of game five, which two guys you don't really expect to see fight. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, I, I'm looking forward to it. it. It's, it's very unpredictable, but I will say three to two Rangers and give me a Capo Caco scoring a goal for the Rangers tonight. Okay. Well, you know, we'll have to, uh, I'll, we'll have to check back with you, uh, on tomorrow's episode of near a locked on New York Rangers to see if you're correct. And, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, I'm talking on the episode of locked on, uh, lightning talking about a lightning three, two win and, and all of you listening and watching on YouTube, go ahead and check in on that action. You could find out. All the news up to the latest uh, for the Lightning, uh, Locked on Lightning on our YouTube channel, LO underscore Lightning on Twitter, Locked on underscore Lightning on Instagram. You could give me a follow at Danky Dank, D-E-N-K-Y-D-A-N-K on Twitter. Tweet to me, tweet to the show. Let us know what you think. Comment below in the YouTube as well as what your predictions are for this on, for this video, whether it be on John's or my, our channels, both channels. Actually, make it both channels or it doesn't yeah. count. <laughs> and, and and you could find John. John, where can they find the show? Where can they find you? Yeah, so I mean, I'm on Twitter at jchick17, or uh, the you get the show's Twitter handle as well at lo underscore ny underscore rangers. And of course, you know we're on every audio platform you can think of, as well as YouTube. Uh, so definitely, you know, give us a like, give us a subscribe. Uh, if you're a Lightning fan, come on and tell me how wrong I am about any predictions <laughs> or anything like that. Uh, we we like to have fun here. So uh, so yeah, yeah, definitely check us out. Yeah, I don't. I don't have to tell Ranger fans uh, to come talk to me. They'll they, they'll, they'll find me. They'll, <laughs> they'll find, find me. It. Yeah, they'll, they'll find, find me. So uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's been it for this crossover episode. Thanks for joining us. And yeah, we'll we'll talk later in in the season as these two teams meet up once again at some point. Absolutely, man. Looking forward to it.